Hello, everybody. My name's Sean, and I'm Fire of Life 2018, and I'm bringing you a tips and tricks video on Furthest Frontier. If you haven't heard of it, I wouldn't be surprised. It's in alpha, um, I think. It's in early access, maybe, even. It's good. I have played 500-some hours in it. I am addicted to this game, but it's kind of calming. Like, it's not one of those fast, hop action to action games. Like, it's really pretty. This is set on really low graphic settings because I'm also recording and my computer's not super like it used to be. It's amazing how technology surpasses us all, but still look how pretty this is. Like, it's so pretty. Like, every little detail in every little house, like, they all have laundry. All these little characters move around. They all have paths. Like, it's a reason it's a graphic intensive game is because, like, because my computer's no slouch, mind you, but this is a graphic intensive video game. And obviously, I could make things look a little prettier. Like, this is Statue Alley. I wish the statues, like, automatically rotated, maybe. That'd be nice. <laughs> so it wouldn't just be all the same statue. Like, could I not have just, hey, look, let's, let's build Statue Park here. Like, let's, we're going to build a park and put some statues around it. And I was like, wow, that's really pretty and cool. But then it, they look weird. They're all the same. They're all facing the same direction. I guess I could have rotated those myself and made them look different. But they're the same dude. He must have been a very important, like, town crier dude. Like, whoever it was. Anyway. Anyway, so some of the uh, things that you need to know about this game. I would say the first thing that's going to come up when you're starting a new game is fertility, which if you hit F on the keyboard, it shows this, like, colored layout of fertility. You're really looking for these, like, uh, deep blue areas, but you're not really going to find those. So you're probably going to find some, like, green, probably into this area at most, and then have to build it into this. I thought this is my second playthrough that you're looking at right now. I'm probably going to live stream my third one here shortly, but this is my second uh, playthrough. And I thought on this one, like, oh, the field doesn't matter. You can just use waste and livestock and stuff to, like, bring it up. But I had no success. Once it was below 50% fertility, it seems like it just went down. Like, I guess the clover didn't grow enough to give it fertility, perhaps. That could be my only thought process is, like, maybe the clover, like, it was so unfertile that the clover was not bad. I said that about livestock because, look. Here's where my livestock are graving, and slowly it's getting greener than around the pastures. I'm, I guess this is the, where they walk the most or something. I'm not real sure. I might have a goat also here, and that's why this is turning greener faster than the rest of it. But, like, I just did this over here where this was completely yellow, but I've had my livestock grazing on it enough that if I wanted to put a farm in it, I probably could get a decent fertility rating out of that. Like, look, 63% already right off the bat, just because that's where my livestock were going. Unfortunately, you don't get livestock until level two, so you got to be careful where you plant, where you first put down your first city, because you need fertile fields. That's what I have discovered in this playthrough: is that farming is so crucial, and you got to be careful. I would say you need to monitor how much you put down per season, because, um, like, it's basically planting year on year. Like, you really got to be got to be slow and steady about this. Because you know, like if you overdo, you end up not having enough laborers to do your economy that you need to build very early game. So labor management is super crucial in that point. And to that end, there is a setting in the game under general called minimum uh, maximum villagers that lets you put a population cap on. I did not know that existed, and I was pulling my hair, like metaphorical hair, out because... I was like, why is this not going over? As you can see, my population cap is at 1,600. And you're like, why was this not going over 1,000? I would like, I sat here for probably 10 years, being like, 10 game years, being like, why, 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 why? It's this. It was this, this whole time. I had to Google it. That's the only way I, figured, that's the only way I found this, was to Google that. And I can see why, because now that I've gotten up into this population cap, I, as you can tell, that once I start doing this, it's going to like crash once I once I play it. <laughs> um, that's why we're not. So the gold and desirability. The decorations down here are your best way to improve desirability. Like amenities are good, but you should only put those down if you need them. Like the temples actually come with people. Like they cost a monthly upkeep. Uh, like this costs a monthly upkeep. Uh, I guess it doesn't. Actually, th these make gold. Mar the market is the building that makes the gold. You put that down and that gives you the circle. That's why I always put that down in the middle. My ideal setup at this point has been uh, like a market, a temple, a school, a healer, a pub, and a bakery. Oh, that's why this is the pub. Yeah, that's the pub. That's the bakery. Also a rat catcher. You put those things in a circle and then build your houses around it. And then you can put in like wells on each corner. 
then you can put in like another temple here and there to improve the desirability. Like you notice the difference here, like this one's almost there. It's at 83% and this one's the manor and that one's at 91%, probably because it's closer to the statues than this one. So I've been building statues along this wall here to improve desirability. Like if I were to take this, put down another statue, turn it sideways, it's the wrong statue, put the medium statue, that's the wrong, that's it. See, it gives you a 1% desirability bonus, which I notice kind of like it does stack, but you don't get as many, like they're unique. If I take this one statue and put it near somewhere that doesn't have a statue nearby, like it would give it 2% here. I, can't, I know you can't see me. I'm pointing at the screen like, hey, look at the screen. Anyway, it's this this right here. There's 2%. You see how it's getting better because it's that's where, oh, there's 3%. Like, I already put it, like, right there. So, I mean, you could destroy a building, but then the building, you know what I'm saying? So, each one of the houses has higher uh, capacity. So, you're building population with, with the desirability. But don't let that stop you early game because you don't have uh, a lot of the access. So, I mean, I would say build a lot of shelters with this mentality here. Like, oh, okay, let me build this market and leave the space in the middle for all your things and then build your houses on the outside in. That's, that's the best way to start early game building your settlements. Uh, invest in gold. Like you see this, this number up here at the top where the 96 is going down. Like you want to keep this positive. If you see this going negative at all, you need to start – using some of the gold you currently have to expand your like to raise your gold progress or add more housing in general like put down another market and build a whole another thing if you start to see this coming down but you need to like a, a market requires no upkeep but it requires a bunch of houses so i mean if you want to just plop down a market and a bunch of little home settlers and just just early game to get you a thing that's what you're doing but make sure you leave space in the middle that's that's a huge tip um crop rotation i probably should have done this when i was talking about fertility uh the crop rotation uh, let me go Z, it takes you back to your home queue, and then all my farms are up here. I had to Google this too. Basically, each crop is going to give you, your, one of the rotations is going to be a clover, a work, and a turnip. One's going to be a clover and a bean, and then this one here will rotate, like wheat is the highest one, but you can change this out to whatever, like wheat, flax, uh, cabbage, this. I mean, I have seen people make each individual field a thing like you I, I want a cabbage i want carrots i want peas i want i guess peas give you fertility but notice that the thing is down there where the fertility impact that's probably the most important thing and then your placement's not so crucial like you might lose a few plops to um uh frost here and there or a few crops to heat here and there but no big deal like it's not worth your time and effort to spend looking here at least i think i mean if you wanted if you wanted to be the person who wanted to micromanage this and go down to each individual crop season you could this game is definitely set up to be that kind of game. If you wanted to be that micromanagement, you easily could. It tells you all the little... This, this button here changed my life. I didn't realize it existed. Um, it gives you all the numbers and produce. Like when you get down to like uh, productive goods, like when you talk about what you need to build, you can look to see what's produced versus consumed. Like, uh-oh, I am using more tallow than I am producing. So I should drop down a hunter's lodge or another barn or something to increase my tallow if you get my drift. Because you always want to be uh, producing more than you're consuming. That way you'll, your supply chain will eventually work itself out. Uh, okay, I think that was it. I think I've covered all things that I've had about like the main like welcome to uh, Furthest Frontier. If you liked what you see, hit the like, subscribe, and follow button down below. Um, I will be live streaming every day for the morning Wake and Bake at 9.30 through 10.30 Eastern Standard Time. And then I'm going to play this game to later today. So if you have to catch this and want to see it, come play it. Let me know. Okay, bye!